people get ready, people get steady, it's the start of a brand new day. People get ready, people are ready, listen to what I say. Well, she don't really know, no honestly, Derry. I don't know what Peter will say. Well, now you're doing fine. Got the neighbors beat, and you're just gonna lose control. Go on a fluster like a soggy duster. You wanna crawl inside your hole. You go all a dinner, shrugs I am with her. Such a flush, go red flush to the famous man. I don't really know. Oh, I'm just kidding. I don't know what Rachel would say. Oh, well, she don't really know. No, honestly, Derek. I just don't know what Rachel would say. It's the new sensation. It might be a last chance. It's sweet with the nation. Get up, get on down to the rhythm of the famous man. Well, I don't really know. Oh, I'm just kidding. Really bossing me round today. Well, she don't really know. No, honestly, Derek, she don't know what Rita will say. Well, she don't really know. No, honestly, Derek, I don't know what Rita will say. dedicated to become an ice skater. You weren't dedicated, you just wouldn't do it. And tough. Oh yes, you, you have to be tough with yourself. I mean, I've never had any steady boyfriends. Neither has he. <laughs> We've only just 34 this year. I mean, it's difficult to have a steady relationship with somebody when you've got to get up at three o'clock in the morning and make the four hour return trip to the ice rink every day, you know. I mean, I suppose I could have a steady relationship with somebody from TVAM, but I don't really fancy Jimmy Greaves. <laughs> my dad's just had the lounge converted into a new practice rink for me, and I've just had my bedroom knocked through and all the central heating removed from there as well. <laughs> well, no, you never get cold as you live in like You have to have that sort of dedication if you want to become a top world champion. Oh, look. <laughs> Next year. <laughs> Hello, Edwina here. You know, a lot of people say that I'm the sort of person who opens her mouth and says the first thing that comes into her head. Well, you know, that simply isn't tadpole. Everything I say is clearly and carefully thought out before. 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 And to imply, as some people do, that I simply say something contentious or provocative, simply to get attention. Well, that's complete and utter. Hello. South Africa is a nice country, and fat people should be deported. <laughs> May I also say, quite categorically, here and now, that I have never once courted or encouraged my own publicity. And you can quote me on that. Nor have I ever done anything simply to fuel my own publicity machine. Hello? Yes, of course I'll jump off Beachy Head on a unicycle with my head in a bucket of custard again. Goodbye. I am simply a hard-working, diligent, committed politician who seeks to serve the best interests of her constituents. Provided they don't drink, don't smoke, don't have sex, don't have black bars, and don't argue with what I have to say. And to suggest, as some scurrilous elements have, that I'm patronising. You do know what patronising means, don't you? And dictatorial. Arms in, chests out, chin in, listen to me when I'm talking to you. It's a vicious, unfounded slur. I just hope that this helps to clear up the matter and put the record straight once and for all. End of statement. Now, where's that unicycle? <laughs> you know, there are many things in life that are precious to us all. Peace, joy, harmony, Cliff Richard concert tickets. But the most precious thing of all is love. Love is the most wonderful thing you can give anybody. And I've written a song about it, and it's called Bang on His Door. And it's about giving love to your neighbor. And it goes something like this. The gift of love's the most precious thing that you can give away. So give it to your neighbor. I give him all your love today. Go around there when you go home. Bang upon his door. And if he will not open it, then you bang.
So this is the new social security office. <laughs> Things have improved. If I could just have your initial and surname, please. It's A. Jeffries. Alan Jeffries, age 29, single, 24 Auckland Street, NW6. What other details have you got about me there? <laughs> you prefer thick sliced marmalade. You've got two dogs called Basil and Bert. You've just bought a new settee. It's a sort of greeny beige colour and you've got two cigarette burns in it already. You're planning to go on holiday in July with your girlfriend, Miranda, who's just gone blonde again. You do not treat her rotten, don't you? No, I don't. Oh, well, don't you? And what about the girl in the baker's with the big chest? It's <coughs> all here. Yes, well, I must say it's an improvement on the old days. It used to take you a fortnight just to find my file. Yes, now what was your query? It's about this war widow's pension you keep saying. <laughs> hello, children. Let's say hello to Chalky the Blackboard Boy. This week, Chalky is looking for a job, and we're going to try and help him. He could work as a caption on a television sports programme. That's a good idea. Or he can work as the picture in a lady's toilet. Or he could work as the new logo for Channel 4. Or maybe he can get a job as the start of a game of noughts and crosses. Or a simple genetic DNA cell structure. Perhaps even as a colour television aerial. But my favourite job of all for Chalky would be as a youth trailing scheme symbol. Poor Chalky. At least it keeps him off the streets. My glorious mud. Nothing quite like it. My, oh, you can see there. Lance Corporal Thirty here at the Queen's Own, or the Muslim Hills Own, as I call him. <laughs> I've been yomping 50 miles across Richard Dartmoor, and all because Lily Livered Edward has let the royal side down yet again by resigning his commission, leaving yours truly to step into the breach and save the day. <laughs> Well, I should save on a facial mud pack when I get back to town. <laughs> By the rivers of Babylon, when we step through. <laughs> Actually, when Edward came down on that ill-fated morning with a care bear under one arm and a Mr. Snoozer under the other and announced that he was leaving the Marines, well, you could have heard a pin drop. Which is quite surprising, really, because usually when Edward speaks, no one takes the slightest bit of notice. <laughs> Actually, this first day here in the Marines was quite a hoot, you know. They gave me this camouflage gear, which it isn't difficult for me to get into because I look a bit like a tree trunk anyway. And then they gave me these size 10 army boots to wear. And I said, well, I'm not sure, really. I haven't got a thing to go with them. <laughs> anyway, before I knew it, there I was in the Marines. Actually, it became a lot easier after that, you know. I learned how to disable a tank simply by lying in front of it in the middle of the road, causing it to topple over on one side. <laughs> and I learned how to place a landmine, just in case Princess Michael of Kent comes for dinner, unexpectedly. <laughs> uh, so there I am, an ample-bodied marine. Come on, you lot, there's another 20 miles to go yet! <laughs> Terrible grammar. I'd like to teach the world to drink a sweet and fizzy drink. It brings up pennies nice and bright and unblocks any sin. <laughs> I like to give the world a drink. 
Fine, Mary Beth. It's just you look kind of funny. Anything wrong? No, nothing's wrong. Yeah, let me help me with this. Thank you, Christine. Hey, you want to go for a drink or something? Gee, I'd love to, Christine, but I gotta get home and see Harv. You know how he likes to tell me he loves me and stuff. Yeah, I know. It's just that we haven't, you know, all day. You mean we haven't given each other one of those? We've been through a hell of a lot today, and we said a lot of things we didn't mean, but we're still friends. So it looks. Yeah. You ready, Christine? Thank you, Christine. <laughs> Boy, I needed that. <laughs> My baby's left me. She's gone away. Sorrowful and sad. That's how I feel today. I just can't figure out why we had to part I'm miserable, unhappy with my heart Can't comprehend why she walked out the door Feeling real great Ain't gonna smile no more I know she won't phone I'm feeling so alone I'll suicidally play the saxophone Since she walked out my life Keep thinking I will stab myself with a knife I think I'm going mental I go into a trance And yet I still want to tap dance <laughs> Don't understand why she went away Just wish I knew so I wouldn't feel so great Feeling so bad Cause I know she'll never call I think I'll have to go and end it all model. I'm a singer, dancer, actress model. But my problem is, I'm just too pretty. <laughs> I know that sounds really big-headed, but you see, I can really handle anything. I mean, yeah, I have done glamour work, but I don't like taking my clothes off willy-nilly. I did strip for one play, though, where the director said the part really called for it. It was on Radio 4. <laughs> I've just been signed up with this really good new personal manager agent. He's called Carlton Westgate. Have you heard of him? He's deeply involved in my career. He says to me the other night, he says, Maxine, do you fancy Chekhov? I said, not really. I mean, he's good in Saturday Superstore, but since he married Maggie Philbin, he's really gone on. <laughs> and then I was offered a part in Ibsen's Ghosts, but 
I don't fancy a horror movie. You know, he says to me the other night, my personal manager, Agent Clarkie, he says to me, Maxine, you really must spread yourself. So he's put me up for Othello, Merchant of Venice, and Bullseye. <laughs> but I hate people going on about themselves. Let's talk about you. What do you think of me? Games with Roberts. Miss Roberts of Great Britain wins the first set by six games to love. New ball, please. All right, Victoria. What are you doing? Well, I'm winning six love. Exactly. You're winning. You're British. You should be losing. You should be showing that unmistakable blend of gallant despair and phlegmatic defeatism that only British players have. Sorry, I suppose I was just concentrating on winning. Exactly. You were concentrating on winning and forgot that the British game is all about losing. Don't you want to join the Immortal Hall of Fame? Joe Jury, Sue Barker, Annabelle Croft. Remember, we have some of the finest losers in the game. All right, girl, come on, on your feet. Let's try a few exercises. Right, let's start off with the... Joe Jury always looks so beautifully hard done by. Good, good, good. Loosen up, loosen up. Right, let's try the... Annabelle Croft raises the British fans' hopes only to dash them again in the tie break. Good, good, good. Right, let's finish off with the... Sue Barker. Oh, my God, I hope Cliff isn't watching me cock this one up. Great stuff, lass, great stuff. All right, let's get out there. Head up, shoulders aloft, heart held high, and lose for Britain. Britain. <laughs> ah, yes, lovey. I've always preferred the world of theatre to TV. It's theatre first, second, and third for me. Un, deux, et quatre. <laughs> oh, you see these poor devils stuck in TV serials and soap operas. They get so stale and tired and typecast. Admittedly, I've been in Swiss cottage capers for 12 and a half years now. But, lovey, what I've got is technique. These modern telly actors, they can't project. In that theatre this afternoon, when I was on stage, you could have heard a pin drop. Admittedly, the theatre was empty. But as I said to Larry, dear, dear Larry, Larry Trubshaw and his performing peaks. Ah, Larry, thank heavens for us real pros and wonderful live theatre. <laughs> I've a song to sing, it sounds like old notes. Sing it too, so no one knows that the music doesn't fit. Oh, rhyme me the heard it in a beat of three more times. And Starlight Express. It gets right up your heads. Why we do it all the time. No one really bothers, and no one really cares. Cause they're all foreign tourists who go to these shows. You could do the same if you're not. Frogs and Japanese, they don't understand, they don't know what rhymes or what doesn't rhyme, and I don't give a toss. The next musical is gonna be on ice with John Curry skating and lyrics by Tim Rice. Oh, wait a minute. Those last two lines rhyme. I've a song to sing, it sounds like all the rest. Mr. Still goes where's companies. The money rolls in. That's another two.
where did you work before you became a customs officer then? I was an usherette down at the Odeon for ten years. Oh. Do you find it hard to adapt to this job then? No, not a bit. Passport, please. <laughs> anyway, I'm not. Oh, no. What's the matter? There's a parcel here from those awful American people who came to stay with us. Here's a letter all the way from L.A. Put it in your VCR and see what we have to say, your American cousins. Oh, you don't suppose they're thinking of coming to stay with us again, do you? Well, we'd better find out. <laughs> Hi! Hi! Hi, uh, how are you doing? Having a nice day? They look like a couple of rich pink poodles. <laughs> Enjoying the rain? Uh -huh. It's nice and sunny here in California. I taped this videogram myself on my new stereo laser disc home entertainment system. It's the best that money can buy. I guess it's just like we're right with you in your living room, right? God forbid. Please don't tell us how much it costs. $6,300 plus tax, but what the heck? <laughs> Chuck and I want to thank you for showing us around your quaint little country. And that corner shop, Harrods. We love Harrods, didn't we? We could have stayed there forever. I wish you had. Hey, guess what? Debbie and I decided we're going to come and visit y'all again uh -huh. real soon. Yeah. Maybe even this summer. No, never, no, no, no. never. Hey, I heard that. Did you hear that, Debbie? I sure did. But that's impossible. In America, nothing's impossible. That's why we're the greatest goddamn country in the world. It's nice to know what you think about us after having been so polite for two weeks. You want to know something else? Your pasty white faces didn't throw much sunshine into our lives either. New English can be just as wet and dreary as your weather. No need to be so rude. At least me Americans don't talk about people behind their back. Yeah, we're polite enough to tell them to drop dead to their face. That a boy, Chuck. You tell them. Give them a piece of your mind. I wouldn't bother doing that. There's probably not enough to spare. I think our so-called special relationship has come to an end. Chuck, give them back that Christmas present they gave us. You mean that cheap bunch of junk they gave us? Yeah. Sure. Go Here, on. catch. Oh, right. Give them back those six cups as well. I here, give him a curveball. Yeah, that's it. Quick, Philip, the remote control. Press reverse. The Americans may have the technology, but we British know how to use it. Don't really know, no honestly, Derek. I do know what a real 